Where'd that weight tag go? Where'd it go? Where was it? Yes, so 4040. Zero, zero. Now that is a weight. So somehow this two ton boulder, I want to take this two ton boulder. I'm not sure if Corey wants to, but I definitely do. It's definitely gonna be a teamwork thing. Yeah. It's gonna be more than one machine, that's for sure. Yes, so. Side of chicken and rice today. Right. <laughs> An extra side of chicken and rice. Hey guys, Jack here. Okay. <laughs> As you can tell, it is Friday. Well, boys, started day two. We got the last of our rock delivered this morning. You can see it back there. We've got Corey, Dan, and Jack just showed up with some additional equipment. Yes, we needed more machines out here. More equipment, the better. Why not? Corey's not the only machine out here. So the goal for the day is going to be to rock in this reservoir area and get into that stream waterfall section that's going to be kind of tying into that retaining wall over there. Let me come over here and explain that a little bit more. So we've got a waterfalls, like I told you earlier in the video, it's gonna start right about there drop this way into a pooling area and then kind of meander its way back down and meet up with a centralized waterfall that's going to be where both streams converge somewhere around right here now may shift forward or backwards a foot or two but i really want to rock in this basin the idea when rocking in this reservoir is going to be making it very accessible and approachable for the grandkids we want this thing interactive and fun we're going to drop a bib liner down over a portion of this section of the reservoir allowing for an infiltration area somewhere back over into here. You can see we've got our 12 large aqua box, which is a little bit undersized for the length of stream that we have, but that was with the intention that we're gonna be running an autofill to it. So no worries there. So rock in the reservoir, then work our way back. I'd love to start banging out this portion of the stream. I think inevitably we're going to need to seam a piece of liner off of this corner over here. We'll see how the rocks lay out, but that's the goal for the day. It is Friday here in our world. So it's the last day before the weekend. Oh yeah. Jack's putting his big boy boots on and we're gonna get ready to cruise right along and make some serious headway. got the first rock that we're going to be placing. The idea of this reservoir area is supposed to, like I said, make it very interactive and approachable for the grandchildren, but I also want it to look like an extension of a stream over into here. So we're going to use some of these flat rocks that are about 14 to 16 inches tall, which should give us plenty of height from the top of patio to our basin. We sunk this basin down a good eight to 10 inches below the top of patio down over here, but these will really, really help because everything's sloping back up that way as we go. So these should fit in really nice and give us a couple inches above the height of the patio and really set our edge nicely. I like the rock that Corey's strapping up right now. It's got a triangle kind of shape to it. It'll allow us to twist and turn that and really set a really cool edge, creating that movement that we're always looking for in the stream. Okay, all right, so. We're kind of at a point in the project where we're making decisions here. And I, I'm gonna go ahead and, and I'm just gonna let everybody out there know and let you guys know that this is, I guess, me and my harebrained idea. And I'm fortunate enough to have teammates that are supporting me on what might be a dumb decision. But we have about a two ton rock over here that I wanna put in the stream. Unfortunately, what it's going to do because of the size of it is going to be a little bit too far past where we need it to go because of the constraints of the liner that we currently have. This is the rock. Can you guys see that? This is the rock right here that Corey has strapped up. Where'd that weight tag go? Where'd it go? Where was it? Yes, so 4040. Zero, zero. Now that is a weight. So somehow this two ton boulder, I want to take this two ton boulder. I'm not sure if Corey wants to, but I definitely do. It's definitely gonna be a teamwork thing. Yeah. It's gonna be more than one machine, that's for sure. Yes, so. An extra side of chicken and rice today, we'll be all right. An extra side of chicken and rice. Sun is brutal. Did you put on some SPF 1000 today, Jack? Yeah, I did. Get your pasty little skin, little color. Yeah. <laughs> How long are you gonna shake that thing? <laughs> until, I, until I hear it. Let's see your boots move while you shake it. Let's Why? see what you got. So all the ladies and men out there, your dance moves. Jack, you want me to turn the music back on? No, you'll get copyright for that. Okay. Not if it's like shorter than five seconds. Just do the juice box. Just make a short segment of it. Is that a thing? You got a dance called the juice box? No. Jack. What? That's why we do you have? Juice box. Do you have? What? Not really. Do you have a dance that we don't know about? No, I don't. Hmm? No, not if I know something that you guys do. Mm. <laughs> 
watch airplane. So oh my god. The liner's yeah. over here, Jack. No. The liner's over here. Explain Jack, the liner is over I, here. I can see it. Let's go. So we've got our seam done. We've got that liner placed back. We've dug out a little bit more of a depression down in there. What I wanted to avoid was having the top of that rock be much taller than this patio height and the grade that comes off of it. And what I mean by that is just the, the butts up to the patio. I want it to come horizontal and I don't want that rock to be sticking up more than a couple inches at all from that existing soil over there. So this rock is going to set down right about where that fabric's at. Fingers crossed. I think this machine can do it. We definitely got it over here yeah yeah hopefully it was worth it hopefully that four man hour seam which i think inevitably was gonna have to happen regardless so we got it done so we're gonna set this rock and then it's lunch time let's go Guys, so it's the end of Friday. See that we put in a decent amount of rocks today. We had two points today where we had to seam the liner. I'm right about here and right behind these rocks over here. Oh crap. <laughs> hey guys, Jack here. What's up? As you can tell, it is Friday and everyone's in a good mood. We got a lot of work done today. When we got here, we only had the basin done this morning or as of yesterday. And then today, you can see we set all these rocks and we were able to get pretty much our left side of the stream, three quarters of the way lined with liner and we were, had to make two seams. We had to make one right about here. And the reason why we had to do that was because of this rock and this rock, we just wanted to give us a little more flexibility. We weren't able to pull off an overlap. And then we had to pull another one off right here. And that's because that we couldn't pull off an overlap, as you can tell. And there's a hole in the liner that Jack made earlier. Yeah. But it's okay. All my fault. Patched it up. As you can tell, Mr. Operator over there is like playing with the machines. You just can't stay off the machines. <laughs> but yeah, it was a pretty successful day. We are back, started day I think three out here. Got a little bit of rain over the weekend, which you know, a little sloppy, but we're good. One thing I wanted to show you that we're going to be incorporating is we're gonna be incorporating a used patio pond off this project. We talked about it earlier in the video, but part of the motivation for this project by the customer was to have it very fun and interactive for their grandkids. We're gonna take a used patio pond. That's the large green slate version, and we are going to plumb it and stick it in right about here. We've got a couple notches cut out. One will probably fall this way. The other one will fall back towards the house. It'll provide an area for aquatic plants, but also just something cool and interesting for the children to kind of play with there's these flat rocks that they'll be able to sit on they can you know put their rubber duckies in there let them overflow the top whatever but just give them something to play with in the water over here you can see we have our two three inch lines reduced down to two inch lines coming into the pump vault we have two pumps that are going to be going in there and one of them is going to feed the bowl and this right side stream and waterfalls the other three inch line will go all the way up around and feed that top waterfalls that they're dug out 
out this area for back over here and hopefully we can seamlessly tie that waterfall right into that existing outcropping wall that they have. So we've got some nice pieces with flat edges on them to really butt up to that wall and we can make it look as seamless as possible. So lots of stuff is going to happen today. I'd love to get this basin area finished and get a lion's share of this waterfalls done. It's really only one drop, maybe two coming out of there into a pooling area determined, depth of that pooling area is determined by this spillstone here, which is only about four inches below top of patio there. And because we're gonna bring water pretty close up into there, maybe put a flat rock right over where I'm pointing, just to make, again, make that water as approachable as possible to make this water feature feel very intimate, uh, well thought out, and not so much as an afterthought. So here's the progress that we made today so far. On this side, we got basically all the edging over here all set up. And the look that we were going for is getting that zigzag look with the rocks so that it looks more natural. Over here, we mixed it up a little bit. We had a cobble beach coming up on this side. And what we do to be able to get the mud, in this case mud, because it just poured, this close up to the edges on a sharp corner like this is that we will cut out a piece of fabric and tuck it into the gap right here. And then we'll put dirt over it so that we can get that look and more of a couple beach area over here and then here's the spillway bowl now the reason that we installed it's like this we put the ball valve underneath the shelf right here so that the water has a chance to level out before all of it rises up and then comes over these two parts of the spillway bowl good progress today and we'll see you tomorrow